I mean, I'm comfortable in the gutter, but uh, as long as the morale is high. <laughs> Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with Glenn from No One Projects, Hovar from Behind the Mistakes, and me, KJ, from Crude But Efficient. Woohoo! Woo-hoo! Hello! Was that, was that a bit much? Or... Well, uh, all the lights on my audio equipment just uh, flashed red here like it was uh, downtown Amsterdam, but uh, yeah, I think you drove the point across. I've just got deaf in one ear. Well, at least you have the other. <laughs> so, how have you been, guys? Yeah, all good. All good here in Lincolnshire. How about you? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's been a week, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, seven days in a row with different names. <laughs> That's usually a week. Yeah. Felt kind of weird. It's like, Monday again? Didn't we do that last week? I mean, it's, it feels kind of repetitive, but <laughs> yeah, still... Yeah, this weekend went past way too fast for me because we had a birthday party for the youngest with one celebration for the closest family on the Saturday and eight lively six-year-olds on Sunday. So, <laughs> how, we... are, how did kids' celebrations go in Sweden? I'm just a little bit curious, you know, having heard about your other celebrations. Well, that differs a lot, I think, but we tend to just let them loose in the house. And when the energy goes down, we feed them ice cream and cookies and then they (laughs) run around a bit more and then they get a bag of sweets and then we send them home. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that sounds about right. (laughs) No weirdness to any of it then, just normal birthday party for a kid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. fair enough. Just check in. (laughs) <laughs> but you never know no <laughs> so has anyone got any making done yeah. kinda <laughs> kinda <laughs> <laughs> that sounds interesting Glenn you get you get to start okay so I've been working on a project that's been giving me a little bit of difficulty which shouldn't do um, and it kinda put me off going in the workshop so I don't think I got in the workshop till about three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday when I actually had the whole day clear to go in there. But I went in there and uh, didn't carry on with that project. I made a a cat basket instead, a cat bed, (laughs) (laughs) which was nice because I didn't film it and it was just nice to get making something again. And so Sunday I actually got in there and started working back on the project and it's nearly done and it's nearly all filmed. But... uh... Making a cat bed. That sounds kind of random for someone who don't have a cat. Yeah, or... no, but our, dog, our dog's quite small. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got a kitten, Havard. Woohoo! <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so, sadly, we had to have our cat put to sleep last November, and my daughter and my wife have been really missing the cat me not so much i don't really like cats but as it turns out i really like kittens especially (laughs) especially this one he's called jack and he's just the right amount of knobhead (laughs) he matches you (laughs) yeah he does yeah he uh, he waits till i'm asleep and he attacks me (laughs) sounds about right yeah He's when gunning I'm, for alpha male, I think. Yeah. When I'm eating a sandwich, he comes up and tries to help himself off the plate. I just, I just really appreciate his, his. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's just brilliant. <laughs> nice. How how old is he? Uh, eleven and a half weeks. Hmm. Yeah, he's a he's a rescue cat. We only have ever have rescue cats, and but this is the first one we've ever had as a kitten. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, but he's a cool little fella. Yeah, Just I let me know how... if you need another one. Yeah, I got one I'm trying to give away. <laughs> I, I tried to give the last one away for years, but it doesn't work, does it? They're not as, they're not as cute when they get older. No. <laughs> does yours destroy all the furniture and whatnot? No, because we're not letting her into the house. So. Uh... Well, it's no wonder she's a mean old bastard then. Well, she was all the time. It was my father's cat, and of course, I draw the 
drew the shortest straw when he passed away and uh, me and my sister is like who's gonna take care of the cat and of course uh, I just realized yesterday when you posted the picture of the cat we started just counting on our fingers and we've had that cat now for longer than my father did so it's basically more our cat than it ever was <laughs> his but that was a rescue as well and it came from a home that should never have cats so she well she didn't have all the screws in the basket from the first place and you can't have her inside she also had something about uh, uh puking and shitting on the furniture and whatever so <laughs> she got was this the woman that owned the cat or the cat <laughs> i never met the one who owned it so i don't want to know um but the cat is awful but then again it was my father's cat so we, we can't really get ourselves to get rid of it and i've tried to give her away but of course it's it's like giving away belzebub i mean it's, uh, <laughs> i can't give That's it away to gift. someone i like and giving it away to someone i don't like then i don't know what they will do to the cat so here we are <laughs> cat owner on the seventh eight year in a row does it Against just sleep, does it sleep outside then no i mean <clears throat> uh we did change all the doors in the house except one it's the one downstairs because uh the smallest outer part of the gang has a separate enclosure so we said that we are not redoing that place before the cat is dead so we put in a cat door so she has a her own room basically with her own entrance and that is in line with what my father did because he also had like a cat door so she came and went and she's always been an outdoor cat so she's just inside to sleep and eat so uh yeah <laughs> We never, never we never got to experience a kitten face where she was cute. She just <laughs> moved in. <laughs> Sorry, I, I feel like we've brought you down there, Havon. I mean, when you first came on before we hit record, you were all smiles. Two seconds talking about the cat and you've got a face like, a, I don't know, like a Monday <laughs> morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe I'm we should start all over again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just beaming here i'm just so happy to be allergic so we can't have any furry animals in the house <laughs> yeah That's... wish i were then we could take her to the vet and say this is not working and then of course <laughs> they got the choice do you want to take her or do you want to you know but yeah now of course um we did figure out she's about 12 13 years old um for that type of cat that's she's getting old uh, but of course that fierce creature will probably be the one that lives <laughs> past 20 i'm sure of it yeah. i mean i will we'll probably have to bring her with us if we ever move yeah, the I meaner forgot. they are the older they get yeah <laughs> our first cat lived for 16 years so. yep sounds about right <laughs> <laughs> And KJ, I've never heard anybody say they're happy to be allergic before. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you tell such wonderful tales of uh, kittens <laughs> eating your food, attacking you when you sleep, and shit on <laughs> furniture, and being uh, mean to everything. I mean, it sounds it sounds wonderful to be a pet owner. <laughs> I, I like oh, yeah. I, I quite like the being attacked when I'm asleep. It's like having your own version of Kato at home. <laughs> <laughs> It's just sharp in my reflexes. Oh. <laughs> One day I'm just going to sit down, being alone, and I'm going to watch all those movies back to back. It's It's been far too long. <laughs> the sad thing with those old movies that when you rewatch them, you realize that, ooh, things have progressed, and these yeah. movies <laughs> hasn't really. <laughs> All right, so maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> that, just... that depends. I mean, it's a gamble. It might... I, I don't know about the, these movies exactly. They might pass it, but as some some gems have turned up darker shade of pale <laughs> uh, when I rewatched it because 
it, it did not feel good. The memory was better than the yeah. actual thing. Uh, we're, we're getting a bit down here, I think. Let's talk about something upbeat and, uh, and happy instead. You released a video, Hovar. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you wanted to segue into something happy and upbeat <laughs> yeah something quick and snappy and <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> with fancy music and everything lining up and yeah really happy go lucky <laughs> so you made a video that was 54 minutes long and should have only been seven <laughs> Yeah, a, a, a snarky bastard commented, Ooh, uh, a pre-recorded live video. <laughs> <laughs> it, it felt like I was uh, watching back a, a live that I, a live stream that I missed. And I think it, I thought it was great at ha- to have as uh, a workshop com- workshop companion or something like that. Yeah, so, I'm so. I'm practicing for uh, my first ever live video. So of course it's it's good to do some dry runs. It's like sex, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the first couple of times are terrible. <laughs> yeah, and you just mumble around you ain't, you ain't for an rocking. hour. <laughs> you ain't rocking anyone's world, but at least I kept it going for an hour. <laughs> Why doesn't this fit? It fitted just a minute ago. <laughs> I just cut off two millimeters on this side, and then it'll be fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it it's my longest video, almost up for an hour. Um, didn't really plan on making it. I had no plan for the clips either. I just pressed record as I usually do and started, and then. I didn't get to the thing I wanted to do, which was painting, which I know was going to be a boring video anyway. So I sat down and there is, there's no storyline there. There's no natural way of cutting the video down to make it interesting. So it's going to be either a short, boring video or a longer, boring video. And then I just realized Hmm. if I just leave all the clips in, don't use any music. I could just press compile and upload. So it was my uh, shortest production ever. And it felt kind of <laughs> good. It's like, uh, yeah, spent 10 minutes on a thumbnail and that was basically it. <laughs> so what's your audience? At least three persons have watched it end to end. And <laughs> the stats are not that bad. I mean, it's it's the same kind of stats that any of my last couple of videos. So... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there were some comments there like, uh, yep, this was really for the hardcore fans, <laughs> one said. And, <laughs> and then uh, one of my more frequent commentators also said that uh, this was nice to have on in the background, but I did put it to one, one and a half times the <laughs> playback speed. <laughs> so I had to try that and hmm. Now the video matched the speed that I actually think, so maybe that's a solution going <laughs> <laughs> from here. Yeah, I, I watch most everything at one and a half time speed. And still your watch later list keeps growing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. It's sad. <laughs> but still, I did uh, two projects in parallel. Um, I'm getting really a great along with the the knife so that's going to be uh i'm looking forward to presenting that actually and uh i'm hoping that video is going to be both shorter and more interesting i've also been playing around with green screen and uh br- <laughs> brushing the dust of some old uh editing techniques you look like you're having a bit of a ball with that other weekend yeah pretending to be a, a news reader was it <laughs> yeah, I'm have a I have a news clip for the from the maker community as an intro for my video. So it I felt think, weird uh, seeing I th- you. I, th- I think you two are gonna like it, especially there is a, <laughs> there's a surprise there. It felt weird seeing you uh, dressed up in <laughs> <laughs> yeah in short and uh, vest and that sort of thing. That's not really the workshop attire that we're used to seeing you in. No, no, 
I, I scrub up good. Um, it's a bit. Uh, I, I've seen the videos for Integza, and I've been thinking. Well, I do. I do use the the vest and the the shirts uh, when I go to work. Sometimes, if we have client meetings or something, and of course, my father in law has always been like impeccably dressed in every occasion, except if he's working in the garden or doing some project and I, I really been there that I want to be a, a sharp dressed man but I can't really be bothered and of course I like playing with glue in my workshop so that doesn't really go well with nice clothes so yeah yeah there's some contradictions there just a, a little side note it's a it's like we have a little difference in languages as well you're, you're saying vest and I presume you mean waistcoat I wouldn't know is this a suspenders thing all over again? I think Probably. so. <laughs> <laughs> a West and a suspender. I don't know. It's a... One day you need to draw a picture of how you think we look like. By how you... <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> I'll get on that. <laughs> but go, going back to your knife, I think the, the pictures you, you showed are really, really promising. Uh, it looks really nice, uh, what you've shown of it so far. It does look very smart, and so does yours, and it's a good job it's not a competition, otherwise I'd be really quite worried, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually thought about that yesterday, because I shared that picture, because it's it's not a competition, so it's like I have been fooling around with me already having built it, and then, of course, I haven't built anything at all, and I spent two weeks doing editing of the video before I even started drawing a knife. So, <laughs> But now I'm on track and I've actually built something that starts to look like a knife. And I see you have gone the metal way, so I've gone in a completely different direction. So I'm going for all wood alternative. Did you make yours from a wooden saw blade then? Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh... As we discussed are... in uh, the half pint, uh, I just realized why my um, table saw blade was so dull. It was like a, a wooden template that was stuck there. So <laughs> you were actually supposed to swap that out before you use it first time. I didn't know. So, so I mean... a washing machine bolts thing all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I thought it smoked a bit, but I thought, well, that's probably how it is. You know, hardwood and friction. <laughs> oh, please. Do a saw blade on the CNC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have done that. Stop. Oh, a, four, a four millimeter plywood plate, and I can cut a blade on the CNC and just smack it on and try. Can you cut wood with wood? <laughs> no, you should start your video all over again and cut the saw blade out on the CNC and then cut it like we have, <laughs> pretending it was a metal one. Yeah, that would be less dangerous than chopping a wood. <laughs> But still, both are fun. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm going to put a search in on the online marketplace. If I can find an old table saw that someone is giving away, uh, then I'm going to make a wood blade to see if you can cut cut wood with wood. You can. That's, this this video that? is already out there. <clears throat> okay, that then. depends on what wood and what wood. <laughs> yeah. Wood a woodchuck, cut... wood woodchuck, yeah, all right. <laughs> exactly. You can cut wood with cardboard as well. <laughs> yeah, that one I've seen on paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the problem is, could you then chuck it into your angle grinder? Because I saw you did the, you did <laughs> press the regular drill in your angle grinder, so now we can start chucking interesting things into it, like a pickled <laughs> herring or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking just putting a a dowel or something and starting a fire with it because that would probably be quite easy <laughs> yeah, <laughs> considering how much it smoked when i when i drilled I, with it i'm going to start a poll on instagram and uh, <laughs> with suggestions of what to drill <laughs> steel granite <laughs> yeah because steel are, are known for wanting those high rpms yeah absolutely yeah you don't slow it down <laughs> Well, that's why the, uh, the, the the drill bits are called high-speed steel, aren't they? Ah, <laughs> that's yeah. the reason so why. Can... <laughs> yeah. Of course. <laughs> what else could it mean? It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, KJ, you're making some 
interesting progress on your knife. This one's turning out to be a bit fascinating. Yeah, uh, well, I, I feel like the 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 concept got away from me a bit, but I'm trying to trying to catch up, and I think I'm doing well. I'm not sure. I mean, I had a, the idea first to have some kind of futuristic knife. Uh, and when I when I googled that, most every one of them had some slots in them, because that's yeah. how you make it sci-fi. You you <laughs> you cut some holes into the blade. But you're a woodworker, so you could do that. But you could make it a river table knife. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I think the most intriguing thing is the electronics. What's going on there? Fairy lights. <laughs> well. It, Kinda. I mean, I, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I I got that con concept with the with the slots in it, and then then when uh, when Tim uh, just knocked his knife out in like fifteen minutes or something like that, I felt like I have to I have to add something more. And then I remembered seeing uh, Boy Like Hobby Time putting those uh, LED filament things in his dioramas, which are more more or less bendy small uh, LED. Uh, sticks. I thought, that, oh, that's so looks, you're doing a knife really nice. diorama inside your knife. That's meta. That would be something. But no, I I thought that just <laughs> that sounds a LED. bit nerd forge. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not that good a painter. Um, no, but I thought those lead filaments that would be nice. But hmm, that I had ordered them from China or something like that that takes a long time. Wait a minute, LED filaments. We have those in light bulbs. Hmm. If I just take a light bulb apart and take out the <laughs> filaments and put those in that slot in the knife and make it a power knife, that could look nice. <laughs> but then I, I took a light bulb apart and realized that oh, those filaments are like 60 volts or something like that. <laughs> so I have to plug it in with a, with a power cord as well. I can't use, use batteries. <laughs> Yeah, but that's no problem. I see these. So you get these um, these motorized knives that butchers use. Those are plugged into the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, where we are at the moment. We'll see uh, if I get it all to come together. Sounds very, very interesting. <laughs> it it will probably be weird. Uh, some kind of Democles, uh ceiling lamp might come out of it i don't know um, <laughs> but making progress at least no it's kind of interesting because okay tim was the first one to knock a blade out but uh i think i now have seen a couple of other people joining in making making a knife so we are not the only ones yeah apparently some people are listening to what we're saying and some people are actually <laughs> <laughs> Hearing what we're saying and doing it as well. <laughs> so um, it was Andy from um, Cormorant Craft Moira over in Ireland. Yes. Which is, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's made a start on one and that's looking fantastic. A little it made it really nice and sharp with this professional sharpening, sharpening jig there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, realized that... I have to do the same thing. I've seen a few knife making videos in even katana swords and everything. And the benchmark seems to be like, ooh, look how it cuts paper. I mean, my kid, <laughs> kid's got some blunt toy scissors and everything can cut paper. But okay, if that's a standard, I will, I'll try and cut some paper with mine as well at some point. <laughs> the, the big achievement is what I'm aiming for. I'm making a paper knife that's going to cut steel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you can go with that, uh, what's it called, ABS... Uh, journeyman smith test where you have your knife and it has to cut a rope that's hanging down and you have to cut through a two by four and that sort of thing and still be sharp afterwards and yeah. bend it like 90 degrees well, mine or is like made that. from a two by four <laughs> <laughs> so you I might think, have trouble with those tests i think the ultimate test for a knife is to cut a tomato nicely to be honest with you that is a really good test for <laughs> yeah. a kitchen knife yeah, I have never have had a kitchen knife that could actually cut a tomato in the way that that they do on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> never had something that sharp, <laughs> and I never will. 
I always get my tomatoes pre-crushed in a box, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> You're just stirring around with just a kitchen knife in the slurry. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cutting, cutting, cutting. Crushed in a box just sounds like it's bad handling at the supermarket. <laughs> it might be. I don't know how they make it. <laughs> it just says crushed tomatoes on the outside. <laughs> Use it for everything. Soup, pizza. Pasta, whatever. Face cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crush in the box. That's a really good band name. <laughs> so how uh, is your knife coming along then? Oh, I thought you were going to just glance over that and miss it. And that's what I was hoping for. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I felt you being a bit too quiet. <laughs> well, because... I've got, um, I had another ongoing project, which I accidentally split off into two projects, which then gave me three projects with the knife along. I got a little bit confused and just had to leave one to one side. And it was the knife that suffered this week. Now you know how my life is. I can't cope with it. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I had three ongoing videos all on the same SD card today. I had to sort out. <laughs> it's easy. You just cut them back to back and just post them and uh, be done with it. <laughs> just don't spend any time editing. So why, why back to back? Just uh, put all the clips in in the time order that you made them and make a Pulp Fiction edit instead. And people had to figure them out for themselves. Oh. But you do mashups with songs, don't you? Surely it should be okay to do it with video, shouldn't it? I mean, you did a mashup with your drumsticks. So that's oh, that's your style that... from now on. Okay. I hope that made a little bit of sense. <laughs> okay. The silence speaks volumes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move along. <laughs> <laughs> what should we talk details? Yeah, we can do that on the on the podcast because I'm planning on referencing your builds <clears throat> sorry and then of course we need to publish them but don't publicize them so that they are there so you can then put the links in in the video where you're actually referencing so that when i say and then of course glenn and kj are also doing their knives and you can then find their videos and then I point somewhere up in the screen where everybody does and then you can put in the links there. Ah. But then the videos needs to be done. So you need to have the videos done at least one day before we make them public and then talk about them. Yeah, yeah that's probably doable. Or you can put in a link later. I can, of course, make the video where I reference those and there aren't any links there and I put them in a couple of days later. That's also a possibility, but... But it's more fun to have them from the get go. Sure is. And I probably will be. Uh... What's the cutoff? The 18th? Yes, he says, glancing at the calendar. Yes, 18th is or we're, we're supposed to publish them. We've okay. not talked about time yet, but yeah. Is that a Saturday? That's the uh, Sunday. Sunday, okay. Well, that's no problem. We can, we can figure that out, no problem. Yeah, I just have a shitload of sanding to do and video editing. So then, I'm... Well, that's three three hours worth of content for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be alive. <laughs> I can't wait to get to the handle part of my knife. <laughs> and that, what would be really cool is if the knife was never in the picture, so you just see me and there's some running action <laughs> for three hours. Like, ooh, this is getting kind of smooth. And then, oh, let's flip it over to the other side. Ooh, oh, that's getting... <laughs> oh, it's still leaning to one side. I need to do more here. <laughs> Let me get to the full story of your life. I've rubbed it for so, so long. There's nothing left now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Welcome to the half pint. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> 
<laughs> Given that the last days. half pints have been really up there lengthwise with the main episode, at some point we just do the switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> do a short main episode and then we dump everything into the half pint. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a thought uh, at a, after we recorded last time, something we could talk about, and that's the con the British concept of tea, as in not anything ah. you drink, but the time of day or meal or whatever it is you say, because <laughs> it's weird. I mean, your, your empire is built on tea, the the thing you drink, tea. Yeah, but it, it's at least one of the founding uh, pillars of your empire, as it were. Yeah. But then you say that you have tea, but that's not tea. No. Why? Why is the confusion here? I mean, it all seems pretty straightforward to me. <laughs> this, this, is the, this is the exact same thing, uh, more or less, that uh, back in the days uh, of young, when, when you were dating. In, in Sweden, it's, it's common, the, a thing you can say, do you want to come home with me for a cup of tea? And that's saying, do you want to come home with me and have sex? But I was really? really, I was really annoyed if I didn't get a cup of tea and sex. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I just crap. Sorry. <laughs> I've never been much of a tea drinker before I uh, got way into my older years, so I missed out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say no? I don't like tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. I thought the conversation was going well and then what's going to end on tea? No, thank you. <laughs> Went home. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm more of a coffee guy. What did she think you <laughs> <Yeah>. meant? <laughs> I know what I would have thought. It felt kind of weird. She was like ru almost rubbing up against me and talking about tea. And it got awkward. So I just went home. <laughs> Too many red flags. <laughs> I'll say no to the tea, but oh, I'm really in the mood for a hot chocolate. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we are really in the gutter in this episode, aren't we? Well, so, tea. I'm laughing. So, I, I didn't even get a reference. So. <laughs> so we wake up in the morning, we have breakfast. Yeah, I think yeah. we can all agree breakfast is breakfast. Breakfast is breakfast. That's yeah. the morning meal. Yeah. yeah. And then where I come from, the... But lunchtime, there's a little bit of confusion because you can also call lunch dinner. So that can also be dinner time. Yeah. Which is a little bit odd because it is. It's a bit odd, but yeah, I, I can strict, accept, accept it. Yeah. And then we get to the evening meal, which can be called tea time or dinner. <laughs> <laughs> or if you wait an hour or so, you can then call it supper. Or you can have your tea or your dinner and then have a little bit of supper before you go to bed. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that being said, in Norway as well, dinner, the Norwegian word for dinner, if you directly translate that to English, it's midday. Yeah. And Same in Sweden. At, at some point, maybe that was because that meal was in the middle of the day, but I never got that fact checked. But it feels weird. And of course, to us, it feels natural because we have lived in that delusion for so long and generations that it's become the norm. But of course, when foreigners move here and trying to learn the language, it's like, why do you call it midday? I mean, you seldom eat before in the evening after you got home from work and you have to make it and everything. So why don't you call it like evening meal or something like that? And we just look puzzled at them and... What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so last week, KJ hinted at the Norwegian lunch and said that was pretty weird. What's that deal? Yeah, at, at least some people in Norway have a have a have a different kind of lunch uh, habits than I'm used to. At least, so, Howard, what does how does your lunch situation look like? Well, it is. Uh... A piece of bread with topping on, like a one-sided yeah. sandwich, I, th I think someone called it just recently. And that's yeah. ba basically it. So, yeah. But then again, Nor Norway, is a, we are a potato and bread country. So if you're, I mean, if you're having dinner or if you, if you have a meal 
without potatoes and you dare to call that dinner, we get really skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same with lunch. You always have this uh, mat pake. It's a, you always bring your lunch and it's a, a stack of bread with uh, either cheese or yeah, whatever you can put on top, but often cheese or sausages or something like that. And then that's lunch. Yeah, because in Sweden, most everyone have a cooked meal for lunch and dinner. So when I, I was in Norway uh, during a core during a course, it was it felt really weird when we're taking out to lunch and okay, you get one sandwich and you eat that, and then you get another sandwich, and then you got a Danish, and that was lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and for that, I'm used to getting a a fully cooked meal. What what is this? And yeah, and if you no want to be to... Um, <laughs> fancy about it, you get a glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> so a cold a cold lunch is pretty normal here as well. You know, especially for the workers, you take a sandwich to work. We just the only difference is we don't have one slice of bread. We have one slice of bread, the topping <laughs> or the filling, and then another yeah. slice of bread on top of that. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if there's uh, something to do with. I mean the. Sweden have a longer tradition of the aristocracy and uh, of course uh, the hot lunches is probably just an extension of that. Uh, I think the the Norwegian lunch is more like a, a working class. I mean, uh, heating your food was uh, seemed a, a luxury, I guess. So, <laughs> yeah, some stale, old, uh, hard, molded bread with the uh, the thinnest slice of cheese you could ever get. Of course, there's a reason we invented the cheese slicer because if you're cutting a cheese with a knife, it's like, ooh, look at Mr. Fancy Pants over there, really <laughs> splurging on the cheese. <laughs> I've got to admit, we've got a cheese slice in our drawer and I always use a knife. I like mine a bit thicker. <laughs> no, I can't stand the oh. thick, thick cheese on my, on my sandwich. That's only for... If you have it for cheese, with cheese and crackers or something like that. Do you have decent cheese over there? Do you have, well, I say decent cheese. Do you have cheddar? That's the only decent cheese there is, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we do have cheddar and yeah. a lot of other ones as well. Is it is it proper strong flavored cheddar or is it like the American cheddar, which just tastes like any other cheese, just bland? I think the, the main one is pretty decent and then they just go off and being stronger. Uh, but I, I don't think we have any decent, what do you call it, dessert cheese uh, that's Swedish. I think we import all of them from uh, from England or France or whatever. Yeah. We don't have that. Our, our cheese tradition is more of just something you, you slice and put on a sandwich, not something that's a bit fancy. It's even worse in Norway because we, I think you can find specialty stores importing cheese, but if you want to get like a reasonably priced cheese, but with some flavor, we have to go to Sweden to buy it. So of course you can get cheddar in the regular store here in Norway, but it doesn't taste anything. So um, we actually go to Sweden when you're buying cheese. So Have you not got the... The dairy cows there, or? Well, we... Norway just went in a different direction when it yeah. came to cheese. We have the brown cheese, which is a very... <laughs> That's disgusting, actually. Yeah, it's, it's a very sweet, uh, creamy texture kind of cheese. And I don't think even per definition it really is a cheese. I'm not quite sure, but... No. Um, it sounds like it's been fermented. And, uh, of course, you have goat cheese, and, of course, you have the regular uh, yellow cheese or whatever you call it, but it's, ooh, it's it's a competition in how little flavor you can put into any substance, <laughs> basically. So, uh, yeah. I mean, we don't even use it on our pizzas or anything. I mean, we do get proper cheese for that as well. Yeah, we really love wow. cheese. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very much uh, a cheese lover, but I I say no to the brown stuff because that's not it's not cheese in my mind. 
Well, some of some there is a couple of versions, of course, and, and there is one of them I like, and you need to put it on a toast and with strawberry jam on it. Then then I can muster it down, but I very seldom just have the brown cheese and. Of course, because of that texture, it's also very sticky. So um, it just sticks to the top of your mouth when you're trying to eat it. And then you're going there like a dog who has eaten the pate or something. Like <laughs> just uh, <laughs> trying to get it out. So uh... Maybe that's to try to make it into a sandwich and not an open sandwich. Stick another slice of bread yeah, on but top. You, you can't do that in Norway. Then they will escort you to the border and say, you're... Uh... <laughs> Your uh, li- living privileges <laughs> has been revoked. Yeah. <laughs> Go to Sweden and don't come back. Yeah. We don't need your fancy ways over here. <laughs> so, uh, just changing the subject. Next week, we're going to get a guest on. Shall we tell the listeners, the CMOs, who it is now, or should we wait to the half pint? Do you have a? Did he send? Did he send a sound clip to announce himself that you can play now, or do we need to actually <laughs> say his name? <laughs> no, we're going to need to say his name because I don't think people are going to get it from that. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I think some are. <laughs> I think most we of don't. our listeners are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could do okay. a poll. <laughs> if anyone knows who the next week's guess is, send us a DM and. Uh, You might get a free sticker. (laughs) (laughs) I have a lot of stickers. Have you got some new ones? (laughs) No, I already have a lot of the old ones. Why should I have new ones? (laughs) Did you buy a lot because they were so small and cheap? (laughs) Yeah, I think it was a a minimum number at that size. So yeah, I went with that. But that's kind of fun. Uh, the kids are really in the sticker face, so uh, and they know where I have my stash. So I find my stickers everywhere. So, uh, yeah, well, at least they get to good use. But yeah, back to the guest. Oh yeah, that. Well, yeah, we got uh, Tim from Turgworks coming on. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Yep. So, he's a force of nature in this in himself. So, well, I've recently found he's just got so many other talents other than woodwork as well. So it'll be interesting to talk to him about those. You know, thinking about the drawing, that and other things as well. Other things. Ooh. Other things. Yeah, I know. Let's, uh, let's keep that for the the episode, eh? Just uh, <laughs> yeah, keeping well, people can... on their toes. <laughs> we ought to keep it for the episode otherwise there'll be nothing to talk to about yeah. <laughs> as, as you, as didn't put as it, you, you didn't have to put it that bluntly but yeah <laughs> as long as you two keep us from talking about power electronics then it's, it's fine because we're in the same line of work yeah yeah. oh yeah because that's what's going to be that's oh, that that, ru- that already ruined one question I had, like what, what you do for a living. And then, now I know, so of course. I, th- I think that's that genius. That's that, my edit next week, so I can uh, just say, so why don't you two guys just discuss your work? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fight! <laughs> <laughs> High voltage, 690 or 1000, go! <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably lose that battle. <laughs> At least in English. I mean, is English voltage different from Swedish voltage? Mm, that no, but I think about. <laughs> <laughs> well, when KJ talks about electrics in any other part of the world, it just seems inferior to superior Sweden, doesn't it? No, no, no. This... Some of it. I mean, no, it's mostly everyone that uses 110 instead of 220. That's and just yeah. single face. That's, That's wrong. The you did bash the English, <laughs> dirty bastards. Yeah, I, I hate that. I I hate that with a 
passion. Um, I've been looking for this uh, bench top jointer for quite a while. Um, they have one brand in Norway, which I don't like. And of course, in the States, there is a lot of them. And I found some really good ones uh, with also the, the helical drum and everything. But of course, when you buy it, then you have to have a transformer to boost uh, or to go from 220 to 110. Like, Jesus Christ, why can't they get to the 21st century already? <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, um, I did find one that I found acceptable. And then that's now in UK. And previously, it was too expensive to ship. But I see they have probably struck a deal with... Uh, DHL or something, so now I can actually get it fairly reasonable from uh, Rutlands in the UK. So I might end up with one of those. Oh, interesting. Nice. Yeah, I think shipping got pretty expensive when we uh, left Europe. Yeah, I think that made yep. a big old difference to everything. <laughs> yep, that's you really screwed me. yourself there, and us I, in the... I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Very little screwing on my part. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to that now again. <laughs> I mean, in this context, we are, we are all representatives of our countries, and being the, we have to embody all the, all the faults and all yeah. the shame. <laughs> okay, then I'm doing loads of screwing. That's what the English do. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got to leave now. I've got to go do some more screwing. <laughs> and I don't mean in the workshop. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we have, um, so you get a lot of job site tools here, which run on 110 volt, um, obviously for the safety things that have to run through a transformer. Hmm. And it's annoying when you're looking at the second hand market, you really have to do double check that they're not the 110 versions, you think you've found a bargain and you say, oh shit, it's a 110. If I buy that, I've then got to buy a transformer to go with it. So, Yeah. yeah. I even found a bandsaw at a reasonable price and I'm like, ooh, I'm getting... Oh, 400 volts? Nope. <laughs> 400 volts? Yeah, I think that was the number. It's a, And of course, it was a three-phase as well. So yeah. it was the industrial size of the one I'm looking at and like... Ooh, this one version. is really beefy and at a reasonable price. And of course, yeah, I have to rebuild my <laughs> workshop uh, electrical layout just to run it. So, nope. Well, let's send it to KJ. You can just plug it in the outlet in the kitchen in his house. According to him, everything's three phase. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a three phase outlet in the kitchen for the, <laughs> for the stove. But yeah, oh, wow. I, have one, I have one in the workshop as well. Yeah. That's no biggie. Yeah. Our, our cooker just has a, a thicker wire going to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You have to go up in dimension. It's it's so stupid to have not three-phase and not enough voltage. Yeah. I, mean, they, I like my cables yeah. beefy. It's a small... Uh, no. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> you can just use a smaller cable and have this heating system instead. KJ likes his cables like you like your stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Small and clingy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but that being said, I have also three phase in the distribution cabinet in my workshop, and I will probably make an extension cord from there because when I'm going to hook up the future container workshop, then I would like to run a, a cable with three phase down there because that's where all my power hungry equipment is going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you sure those containers are going to be big enough? Well, I need more than one, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, say again. You don't need more than one. Oh, I need, need, I need more? more than one. So yeah, you just uh, yeah. add more containers. <clears throat> Mm, well, it's, quite, it's 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 a bit hard because it's um, of course it's going to dictate the layout somewhat, um, but it's also kind of temporary solution, of course. But it can be a 
permanent temporary solution. Is that a thing? Uh, is, there, is, there, is there a time frame before you can call anything temporary? Yeah. I mean, when we are moving, of course, one of my criteria is it's going to have to have a decent sized workshop or the yard or the plot should be uh, situated in such a way that you can actually build a proper building. Uh, you can't really do it here. So it's it's a temporary solution, but I am realizing it's going to probably be sitting there for quite a few years. So uh, yeah. I was just stood in mine the other day and somebody messaged me on YouTube randomly asking me what size my workshop was. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and um, my, it's, it's three meters by five meters. And I stood in there imagining one meter chopped off the side. And I thought, Ooh, oh, it is. Three me okay. I thought you said three and a half, but that means that yeah. a container is only two half of no it's it's two and a half actually so oh, it's, it? yeah uh, okay uh, but of course if you're going to have bench at either side and uh, so it's of course my my main work table is on casters already so i could have that permanent dead one side so i just bring it out whenever i need it but uh, yeah the first thing i'm going to separate into a container is the the work i mean the wood the working equipment uh, and of course that is kind of counterintuitive because that has the longest length of material and with and uh, trying to turn a sheet of plywood inside a container you have to go outside to turn it <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> but then again given the price of plywood these days i can only afford this uh, small tea coast that there is anyway so it will work out fine yeah there's a there's a reason i've got my table saw positioned by the main door in my workshop you know it's, it's for that turning purpose yeah. And then I realized something. Of course, I've been looking at one of the containers should be the type where you can fully open one side. Because if you have the miter saw and a couple of the, uh, uh, like the jointer and the thickness are mounted on the table that actually swings out with the door, then on nice summer days, you can open it and you can sit and drink coffee in the sun and everything that makes a lot of dust, you can actually do it outside. But I'm quite unsure if you're going to stack a container on top of there 90 degrees. Because there is no support on those where you're taking out the entire side. So I don't think the, hmm. the layout that I'm going for will work on that type of container. So I'm uh, trying to formulate and draw some sketch sketches that make sense. And I'm going to send it to a couple of uh, shipping container companies that actually rebuilt them for different purposes, because they would probably know. Yeah, that might be a thing that you're not supposed to open the, the side doors when they got things stacked above them. No. But That's then again, I'm stacking reasonable. half a container on top of it. But of course, the only one corner or one short side will be the supported because they are yeah. built to be stacked where the the corners actually match because every yeah, exactly. weight is transferred to the corners and next to the next one so yeah that might need some reinforcement to work the way you were thinking yeah, yeah. that's true then again yeah, i have put, a, just another put the opening, just Sorry. put the opening one on top and don't step out <laughs> yeah that's yeah, then I can sit there and dangle my feet in the air. That's that sounds nice. Be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> I'm putting a slide. <laughs> Ooh, get some, now we're talking. <laughs> just get some timber and build a proper workshop. Yeah. <laughs> but then he has to get a permit. We we talked about this. He doesn't want to talk about anyone. What what I actually thought about was, um, I see there are some companies that that they're making. It's not a shipping container, but it got the frame of a shipping container. But everything else is like uh, this uh, very lightweight uh, <clears throat> prefabricated wall uh, plates or whatever you call it. And then I thought, hmm, is there a company who can just sell me that frame? Because that's what I'm out, or out for. I mean, the standardized frame with the lifting points. Then, of course, making the walls and insulating and doing everything. I could do that myself. So, uh, But I, I started just doing some rough calculations on, of course, materials and then the labor of doing it. So it's it's not going to be cheaper than actually just buying one and start using it. So, 
I would only do that if I wanted to, the content as well. Yeah, but there is a lot of that's... container content out there, and they're far better yeah. than me. I just want to get it done so I can start use it for making dumb things. <laughs> 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 I really enjoyed the uh, build process on my workshop. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but you know, it was yeah. a lot of hard work. Yeah, and it took it did take nearly a year to do. I wished I I wished I'd filmed it. But that's the thing when I built. The workshop I'm in now, I, I like it, but of course it, it was built out of necessity. But if I now move my workshop into a container solution and then one day we probably move and then I bring it with me, I just lift it on top of a lorry and bring it with me. Then I have my fully equipped working workshop already. So you can just put it down and then you can actually build your dream workshop. But then... Mm -hmm. You already have your workshop set out, set up for that work. So that then it would be a fun mm -hmm. process. But starting to building a workshop while you're also s just stacking up on the tools to do it and like uh, making it as you go, that's a bit harder, more boring. Yeah. <laughs> nice to have a bug out workshop. If yeah. the shit hits the fan, you just lift it up and drive away. <laughs> yeah. You just have to arrange for a shipping company to come out and haul it and uh, that all the roads and infrastructure are working and uh, they got enough fuel and they don't are need to shit those, themselves. What are those what? helicopters called that can lift a container? Chinook. Yeah, yeah Chinook, that might yeah. be. Yeah. Why don't you just get, buy a get bus? one of those? <laughs> Why don't you just buy a bus? Yeah. Just drive it off. You don't need to pick it up with anything then, do you? Drive it up, park it on the drive. Now that would be great because it's really annoying when you go to the to the lumber yard and you have to like use the crappy saw they have outside <laughs> rusted and everything just just to cut it to get it onto your trailer or yeah. even worse inside your car but i mean if you have your workshop there you can just park outside the lumber yard and shit i need half a yard extra and you just go in and I'll take this one and then you go out and you start building. All right, now I need a plate. So you go back in and you can just uh, do all your building in the parking lot. And then when the evening comes, you just drive home and put on the kettle. Yeah. <laughs> Have proper all those, all those boring family holidays, just take the bus. All right, kids, you go out and play. Daddy's going to make a YouTube video now. <laughs> <laughs> So you want a double decker bus as well. Yeah. yeah. Living living quarters in one floor and workshop another. That's small. Would be cool because then you could have a project where you're having a gyro stability uh, controlled uh, workshop bench and so on. So no matter <laughs> so, how fast they drive, you can just stand there and plane and yeah. yeah. Because that sounds safe using the table <laughs> saw when your wife is driving and the kids are jumping around as well. It, it's pretty much the same. You're, you're qualified for this, aren't you? It is pretty much the same as the maritime industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the equipment yeah, is could... already there. You just uh, yeah. have to buy it for a couple of million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, right, easy you're peasy. Good for it. Yeah, there must be simpler solutions, you know, from back in the day before all these high tech ones were there. Yeah, and a lot of it is basically, of course, you have a gyro giving. Uh, input to the control module but it, it's still kind of simple on some of the the vessels the crane vessels they have uh, large water tanks on each side and of course when they're starting to lift something heavy on one side it's just some large pump just pumping water into the other side uh, just to compensate and so it's basically a couple of garden hoses and uh, a, a bosch uh, battery powered uh, water pump uh, and some electronics not that out in a day yeah. <laughs> well, the brands are available, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking just that. <laughs> we're, not, we're not sponsored by Bosch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. I did think about that the other day. Should I just start to to put the sticker on the on the name? Because it, it, sometimes I feel that my certain video segments feel like a Bosch commercial. But then I. I this last week I did my first, I ended up doing two like mix up with other people's video on uh, Instagram. 
uh, and everything was tool related and i think bosch was involved in ah. both of them um but shit that took a lot more time than i thought so i'm not gonna make that a regular thing <laughs> i keep um editing doing sticker swaps so when i get my stickers i'll edit a little video that's taking some time now <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, my stickers are piling up. I have to actually get them on that bloody sticker wall as well. Uh, I look forward to seeing you do that, actually. I quite like your sticker-throwing sessions. Yeah. They're good fun. You just have to clean off that part of the uh, workshop. I think it's probably clean enough now, so I just have to uh, stick the, the latest one I got to uh, some magnetic, magnetic uh, backing. And I have a couple of the, to throw. Got my Japanese ones today. That's pretty. They're pretty cool. I really. <laughs> I I saw those stickers and I really wanted a couple of them because it's these uh, small uh, K trucks, which is like yeah. a domestic uh, Japanese market uh, small trucks, and I really want one of those as my. Um, when I pay down the loan on the car I have now, I'm I'm going to downscale a bit and then. I really want to get a K truck, but I either has to go to Germany or the UK to get one. But that's no problem. I can I can make it a road trip. But I really want a small uh, pickup truck for just driving because that's what I'm using my car for today. I'm I'm driving to and from the lumber yard or uh, throwing trash away or something like that. So, do you never need to move the kids around? No, rarely. And of course, as they're getting older, then of course now I do. But give it a couple of years, and they they have bicycles, so they can uh, go <laughs> they to, tie, go, tie go by the, the side. Back. Yeah, it's minus twenty outside. Kids, go on, get to school. <laughs> <laughs> I put yeah. your snow tires on. <laughs> Well, I, I must mention that in this equation, my wife will also have a car. If we had a one car. <laughs> yeah. uh, solution that wouldn't work but uh but that yeah. being said some of them have three seats at the front so i could actually bring both the kids but of course for small uh, small trips and so on these uh the crumple zone on these cars are your knees so i don't i don't want to do highway <laughs> speeds <laughs> in traffic with my kids yeah. in the front seat of one of those no no <laughs> Yeah, my last van was a three-seater in the front, a cosy three-seater. Yeah, I drove to France in that once, and I got two friends in the in the in the passenger seats. One of them's over twenty stone. I don't, sorry, I don't know what that is in kilos, <laughs> but it's it's quite heavy. Well, that that could be a little person, or it could be Andre the Giant for all I care. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> quite quite a large person, <laughs> and the other guy wasn't small either. <laughs> We go through Paris and say, lift your arms up, move your head. I can't see out the mirrors. <laughs> it's great fun. <laughs> you've got all the uh, all the migrants trying to wash your windscreen as you're going through Paris stuck in um, traffic. And it's quick, wide your windows up. <laughs> We're going to get robbed. <laughs> it's like, look, we come from a civilization. Look, you just push a button and... I can wash the windscreen from the inside. Yeah. Look, even got some wiper thingies. Brilliant. You should try it. Seems like a bit of a harsh explanation to the guy living under the bridge, doesn't it? Under a piece of tarpaulin. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's purely a theoretical exercise. Of course, I could never get myself to do that. But yeah, that's a... It was the first time I experienced that was in the state. And of course, uh, the people cleaning your windshield, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the worst is when you're seeing people coming along, you're stuck in traffic and down the line, there's a, a scree screaming individual coming down, screaming at every car. And I like discreetly just <laughs> <laughs> turning my window up and making sure that... Uh, my doors are locked, but of course that's a feature on all American cars. When you start driving, they automatically lock the doors. I guess it's because of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
they um, there was a, a thing. It was an anti hijack thing in Africa, which was perfectly legal. And that was a th- th- a flamethrower underneath the passive, underneath the driver's <laughs> door, wasn't it? I saw that. That had a real. Yeah, I okay. thought, hmm, Colin first, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfectly legal device to have fitted to your car. Um, a friend. <laughs> Uh, and a former colleague of mine, he worked several years for uh, NORAD. And of course, he was stationed in Cape Town for a few years. And the stories he told was horrendous. I mean, carjackings were the norm and they were instructed through work that, all right, if someone is trying, you just run them over, never stop. Uh, and of course, if you, if someone is breaking into your house, uh, if you wait until they're inside uh, your door and, you, of course, you, you shoot them, there, there's not even a trial. If you shoot them in your yard, of course, there's a trial. But as they were informed, it, it was just a formality. It just you need to show up and, uh, and they put the gavel down and that's it. Um, they didn't have when they went to the bank, they didn't have parking spaces. So someone just who worked in the bank, they just took your car and just drove it around uh, the block until you got out again because you couldn't leave your car or anything. And of course, uh, they had specially trained chauffeurs bringing them and their family to and from work because it wasn't basically safe to do any of your own driving. And it's hilariously, it's hard to believe that that was a reality. And of course- I can't imagine living with that. No, it's hard, and this this was 20, 25 years ago, so it might have become better, but you see videos online that, uh, well, there are still things happening in Cape Town and other cities. Shell's brother lived in um, Africa um, a couple of years ago now, and, you know, they, they lived in a gated community, and they were advised not to go out after dark. It's just too unsafe. <laughs> yeah. But that was uh, that was me and my wife's guilty pleasure for many year- years. We saw that uh, the British uh, television show where you have four, four random people having dinners at each other. They they are. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, I don't remember the name of it. I'm trying to think now. Um, come dine with me. Yeah, come dine with me. And the South African version, that was over the top. I mean, <laughs> when we realized they had seasons in South Africa everything else went went away it's just it's only south africa from now because the 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 people there which are basically just british but they have moved there for various reasons i mean that's uh they really know how to find them for these television shows <laughs> i'm not i'm not by a long shot thinking that all the people are like that but uh, there are enough of them that they could actually base a, a couple of seasons on a television show <laughs> so it's fantastic <laughs> Yeah, we used to watch uh, Come Dine With Me years ago, and then it um, it all got a little bit, um, the strategy of the of the whole thing got a little bit weird. So they, they were sort of voting kind of for themselves, and everybody everybody's house that they went to is like, oh, no, dinner was crap, the entertainment was crap. Yeah. Two out of ten, two out of ten, <laughs> hoping that they'd get slightly more off the other people. So it just wasn't much fun to watch anymore. No, it's. Uh, I think the earlier episode was more enjoyable. Yeah. And of course, we we only watched it on YouTube, and then of course, all the full full episode just started disappearing, and then it's just ten minute combo or, or snippets or something, and that wasn't the same. So was that the episode? It feels like it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so very much for listening. <laughs> Woo-hoo! Bye. 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 Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I can find the comment.